long, long ago, Israel, God's people, uh, the, and the, just the whole nation, was going through a very dark period. They had abandoned the one true God, and they were following after other gods. They were worshiping false gods. And God, time and time again, had warned the people, listen, you've got to follow me, worship me, the one true God. And, and the people just continually uh, rebelled and turned away from God. And God said, okay, I, I, I've got to get your attention. And he warned them that if they, did not, if they wouldn't come back, that he would, would bring the massive Assyrian army just to the north of Israel, northeast. He would bring them, and they would capture Israel's people, and they would traffic the people away. They would bring them out and into exile if, if they did not turn to God. And God, God's people just continually were looking for help in all the wrong places. So in the, the passage that we're going to look at today in Isaiah, the, the people... They were, they were looking to a couple of neighboring countries and asking them and their kings and their, their people to help them against the Assyrian army if they would come at them. And so they were looking to other nations for protection. And possibly even worse, God's people, some of them were turning to mediums and fortune tellers looking for wisdom. And this was breaking God's heart. And so... In uh, Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20, Isaiah, one of God's major prophets, warned the people again, and he said, look to God's instructions and teachings. People who contradict his word are completely in the dark. Now, being in the dark is disorienting. It can even be scary or dangerous. But spiritual darkness is separation from God. It's going your own way. That is spiritual darkness. It's hoping for the best in life, but with no rock to stand on. If you're in a dark room, you can just reach over for a light switch, and boom, you're not in the dark anymore. But if you're living in spiritual darkness, what can you do? Isaiah warned that when people look everywhere else except to God for help, in Isaiah 8.22, he said, there will be trouble and anguish and dark despair. In chapter 9, verse 1 and 2, he said, nevertheless, that time of darkness and despair, that anguish and trouble will not go on forever. But there will be a time in the future when Galilee, that, that is, that's just simply a region in the northern part of Israel, Galilee will be filled with glory. So he said, okay, God's people are in darkness. He's referring to spiritual darkness. He said, but it's not going to last forever because there's going to come a time when even in Galilee, it will, as northern uh, Israel, will be filled with glory. And it's kind of interesting because that region, the northern border of Israel, that's where all the enemies came. That's where the most mixture of worship and, and uh, dare I say, rebellion occurred because that was the border with other nations that tried to lead God's people away from God. So it's amazing that I, Isaiah would say there will be a time in the future when Galilee will be filled with glory. Verse 2, the people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. If you have a Bible or you have a, uh, uh, just an app on your phone, would you turn to Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 to 7, and we'll get there in just a minute. So when Isaiah spoke these words that I just read to you, the people who walk in darkness will see a great light, here's how he actually said it. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. For those who live in a, deep, uh, a land of deep darkness, a light has shined. But he was speaking in what we would call a prophetic tense. 
he was speaking in a prophetic way. So he was looking into the future by God giving, God giving revelation and, and words and dreams to Isaiah. God was giving him a glimpse of the future. But the way Isaiah wrote it and spoke it was past tense. He, he said, the people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. But he was talking about the future. So our Bible translator uh, correctly said, we will see, from Isaiah's point, we will see a great light. Do you see the difference? So he was speaking as it's already done. But it had not happened yet. It is an amazing thing that God gives a view, a, a perspective, a glimpse at the future. Because with someone, to someone who has eyes of faith, we can actually be in darkness. And we can look ahead and see God's light. We can be going through a great struggle right now. But we can look ahead and see, God is my deliverer. We can be going through a time where, where we, are, we are in need of healing, but we can look ahead and we can say, God is my healer, period. It's going to happen here. It's going to happen in heaven. God is my healer, period. It's eyes of faith. And so just like Isaiah, sometimes we're praying when we're still sick and we say, praise God, I am healed. We're declaring by eyes of faith that my healing's coming, period. It is coming. God's provision is coming. Sometimes it takes a long time. You know how long it took for Isaiah's prophecy to come true? Seven centuries. So he said, by, by the Spirit of God, he said, uh, the people who walk in darkness in Israel, in Galilee, have seen a great light. Galilee is filled with glory, and he's, he's looking ahead. He didn't even know how far ahead. It was a, it was a long time ahead. Amen. But we know that it was fulfilled. So God's people... In Isaiah's day, as he's speaking these beautiful words we say at Christmas every year, the people who walk in darkness will see a great light. God's people who heard that word, they had a choice to make. They had to choose a filter. What are you going to look at your life by? Are you going to look at your life only by what you see right now and be frustrated or mad or scared? Or are you going to look at your life through the filter of God's past performance, through the filter of who God is, his power, and say, God's taking me through. God is my deliverer. I trust in God. So those people, they had, they had, if you're in dark circumstances, you have a choice to make. You can remember all the ways that God's blessed you and say, God's going to bless me again. I believe it. I declare it over my life. You can look at his promises that are present. You can, say, you can look at God's promises and say, I believe that those promises are going to come true for me. Yeah, and you can make declarations of faith and gratitude that say, by faith I'm healed. In Jesus' name, I am healed. By faith, my family is restored. By faith, my finances are abundant. By faith, I have all the wisdom and direction I need. It's eyes of faith. And that's what Isaiah did. Inspired by the Holy Spirit, he didn't know it was going to take 700 more years, but he spoke it as if he had already received it. So Isaiah... Chapter 9, verses 6 to 7. And if you've got it, man, read it with me. For a child is born to us. Wow. A son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders. And he will be called, let's say this out loud, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. All right, I'll take it over from here. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven's armies will make this happen. This is an amazing scripture, and we tend to only bring it up at Christmas time because it's a, it is a prophecy about Jesus. Uh, but today I want to focus in on two words from this prophecy, mighty God, Amen. mighty God. So who is this one that Isaiah was, by the Holy Spirit, he was looking ahead into the future. Who is this one that Isaiah was talking about who is a son of man? He's a person who is at the same time mighty God. Isaiah said he would be a descendant of King David. So uh, David was Israel's second king, 
Uh, Israel, God, God's chosen people in the, in the world, chosen to bring God to the whole world. That's, that's why they're his chosen people. But Isaiah said there's coming a child. It's unlike any other child. He will be mighty God. He'll be a descendant of his ancestor, King David. So he will be a king, but not just a king that reigns for 10, 20, 40, 70 years, but this king, Isaiah said, whose rule and peace will never end. So he's got our attention. This is not a normal, ordinary, regular old king that we're talking about. We now, we know his name. I don't know if Isaiah knew his name. I mean, he, he described him at, with these names, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father. But we know his personal name, Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Jesus is Son of God, Son of Man, the mighty God that Isaiah was looking ahead in the future to seeing. And so we're going to focus today, and we're in a series of messages where we're focusing on each of those descriptive names that Isaiah gave uh, about Jesus, the Messiah, who would, who would come. And today we're looking at mighty God. Mighty God. So he demonstrated his might through healing. So Jesus came, and we celebrate Jesus at Christmas, and so uh, if you mainly think about Jesus at Christmas, you might always picture Jesus as a cute little baby, you know, little seven-pound Jesus, lying in a manger, wah, wah, give me a bottle. Jesus didn't stay that way, just like you and I didn't stay that way. He grew up, and he came, and he walked among us. And for really a period of about three years, he had a public ministry where he was demonstrating the might of God. And he was demonstrating that he was fulfilling Isaiah's prophecy that he is the mighty God. So Jesus demonstrated his might through healing. He opened blind eyes and deaf ears. He made paralytics mobile. I'm thinking of the one by the pool, uh, and I don't have time to read all these stories, but just such a cool story. Wherever Jesus went, people in need came to him. And the guy by the pool who had been coming there for decades and unable to move himself around, Jesus said, get up. The, another guy was lowered through a roof, uh, a, a hole in the roof, and right in front of where Jesus was teaching, and he because he couldn't move, and his friends lowered him on, on a on a rope or a mat, and Jesus said, "Be healed." And he got up and he picked up his mat and he walked. Jesus demonstrated his might through healing. He raised a dead widow's a, a widow's dead son, her only son, while that boy was on his way to his own funeral. And Jesus said, "Stop the procession." And he called that dead boy back to life. He raised him from the dead. Another friend of Jesus, Lazarus, was in, in the tomb, buried four days, so, to the point where his sisters said, Ooh, he stank. And Jesus said, Lazarus, come on out. And he raised Lazarus from the dead. Jesus demonstrated that he was mighty God through his healing. There's a second way. He revealed his might by overturning the laws of nature. That's what a miracle is. That's the definition of a miracle. Overturning the laws of nature, making things that are impossible possible. Jesus calmed the storm that he was on, that he, that he was in, in a boat in a raging sea, calmed the storm by just simply saying, peace, be still, knock it off, storm. <sighs> Immediate calm. Jesus multiplied a little boy's lunch to the point where it could feed 5,000 people, 5,000 men plus their families. So I'm, I'm estimating 15,000 people with some, uh, a couple loaves of bread and fishes. That is overturning the laws of nature. Jesus walked on the water. This is impossible. And he walked on the water and enabled others to do it as well. He overturned the laws of nature and he shows us Jesus is this mighty God that Isaiah prophesied about. Jesus displayed his might in his authority over the devil. He cast out demons that had inflicted people with torment or physical diseases, physical issues. He, Jesus stared down the devil face to face in, as, as he was in the wilderness 
uh, he was, Jesus was fasting and praying. The devil came to him, starts tempting Jesus with all these major shortcuts around the Father's work in his life. And Jesus stared him down. He overcame every temptation with the word of God. He brought one Bible verse and just said, devil, back off, because that's not what we're doing. And the devil had to back off. Jesus was born as a baby, even, in a miraculous way. His birth overturned the laws of nature. In Luke chapter 1, verse 35, it says, the angel who who had come to Mary, who is Jesus' very human mother, (laughs) the angel um, uh, uh, replied to Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. Even in his conception and birth, Jesus overturned the laws of nature. Jesus was fully human. He was born, uh, he has a mother, Mary, very human mother. But Jesus was also fully God. He was the Son of God, born of the Holy Spirit. God the Father was his Father. So Jesus is the mighty man who is God. He is mighty God. Well, what does this mean for you and for me? Well, Jesus set aside his own healing so that he could be the cure for what ails you. He allowed his body to be beaten and hung on a cruel cross to die so that you could be healed in body and soul. That's what the mighty God wants to do in your life. Jesus submitted his own body to the laws of nature when, as he laid down his life on the cross for you and for me, he, lay, he submitted to those laws of nature that, that, that bodies die in order to overturn the law of death in you. So if you put your faith in Jesus, your body may die, but you will have eternal life forever in the presence of God. The devil thought he had defeated Jesus when Jesus cried out, it is finished on the cross. The devil went, this is awesome. I've just been reading through a long book. I just can't even get into it right now. But I, I just love this thing that even with all the prophecies, the devil and his armies, they didn't get what Jesus came to do. They did not realize what would happen when he died. Death was their thing, the devil's thing. And they thought death was final. So when Jesus cried out on the cross, it is finished, and then he died, the devil went, Whew. Dodge that bullet. We won. Jesus died. But the devil did not know that was when his defeat began. (laughs) Hallelujah. Because the sinless one died for our sins. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus rose from the dead three days later and it, to show that it was your salvation. So when he said, it is finished, he didn't mean my life. He meant eternal life, salvation. It's finished. I've done. I've done. I've just made. I'm making the sacrifice right now. And he died. But then he rose again. And Jesus lives forevermore. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes. Amen. So Jesus came into a very dark world. Do you know what region he made his home in? He was born in Bethlehem, but he didn't live there. His home base was Galilee. That's where he moved, and that's where he went to live with his disciples. So Isaiah, 700 years earlier, says, I know you're in spiritual darkness, but don't worry, Galilee. There's going to be a day come when you're filled with glory. And that day came when Jesus Christ came, began healing everybody, taking authority over the devil and overturning laws of nature. All of a sudden, God's glory was right there, seen in Galilee, just like Isaiah said. Fulfillment. And so those people in Israel, and especially in Galilee, who had walked in darkness, they have seen a great light. And that light is Jesus. He has a name. We have seen that great light too. And that's what we celebrate at Christmas time. We've seen the light. And I mean Jesus. 
That's, he is the light that we have seen. Jesus said, and it's written down in John, it's another part of the Bible, John chapter 8, verse 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Just let that sink in, in light of everything we've talked about today. Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness. We're talking about spiritual darkness. Because Jesus said, because you will have the light that leads to life. This is such a beautiful scripture, especially when you just put this right next to Isaiah's prophecy. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness, spiritual darkness, because you will have the light that leads to life. Praise God. That's awesome. So you might feel like you're walking in darkness and you need Jesus' light in your life. Maybe as, as we uh, have been talking about these Bible verses and what Jesus came to do and the prophecy and, and all that he accomplished on the cross, you might be, there might be a feeling that is starting to well up inside of you like, I think I'm in spiritual darkness. I'm beginning to feel like I need light. I need to meet Jesus. I need Jesus' light in my life. Some of you may be feeling that way. Some, other, uh, uh, some others of you might be so used to walking in spiritual darkness that it doesn't feel weird. It just feels normal. Doing my own thing, figuring my life out my own way, that just might feel normal. You, you might not even realize that you're walking in spiritual darkness. The truth is, we all are sinners. We all were born. All of us, me, all of us were born in spiritual darkness. That is our condition. We are, that is the condition of humanity. So we all start there. We are all sinners in need of a Savior. Amen. And Jesus Christ is the hope of all the world. He is the Savior of the world. He wants to be your Savior today. Would you stand to your feet? I'd love to just pray with you. And if you're, if you're online, would you make where you are a place of prayer? And let's just focus for a minute. Would you bow your heads with me just kind of a, as a way to shut out distractions? And I want to invite you today to put your faith in Jesus Christ, the one who is the mighty God. Maybe you have never put your faith in him. What is faith? Belief, trust, and commitment to obey. If maybe you've never put your faith in Jesus before. Or maybe you did as a kid or a while back and, you, and you've just not really been following Jesus. I want to invite you today to not only put your faith in Jesus, but to be his apprentice. To actually be with him, learn from him, learn how to live life from him through prayer and reading his word, the Bible, and, and through, through being in church and walking with other believers of Jesus. How do you do that? You turn away from your sin. Remember, we are all born sinners. No one escapes this. Turn away from your sin, turn your life over to Jesus, and let him lead. That's how, that's what it means to become a Christian, to put your faith in Jesus. And today, if you would like to do that, if you're ready to put your faith in Jesus, would you just raise your hand? And that will be a signal to me, Pastor, pray for me because today I'm putting my faith in Jesus to save me. So right now, if that's you, you want to put your faith in Jesus today, would you raise your hand? And online, if you're watching, I can't see you, but God can. And I encourage you to do this physical thing, to raise your hand as, as, a, as a signal to God. God, I'm doing it. I'm putting my faith in Jesus today. So I, I, I'm, I'm encouraged to see people in the room, and I, I'm encouraged to know there are people online as well. Would, I'd love to just coach you in a prayer, lead you in a prayer. Would you re re repeat after me, but, but say this to Jesus. Don't pray to me. Pray to, pray to Jesus. And church, let's help them out. Let's, let's just all do it together. Jesus, Jesus. I, invite I invite you into my life. Into my life. I, acknowledge I acknowledge I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. Please, forgive Please forgive me of my sin. Of and make me new. I want your light in my life. And I choose to follow you 
starting now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer today, we just say, praise God. Congratulations. You have just stepped into the kingdom of light, the kingdom of darkness. Whether or not you feel goosebumps, you may or you may not. The truth is, when you put your faith in Jesus, you are saved. Amen. That, that's where it starts. That is, and then, then the rest of your life is just beginning to follow him. But, but if you put your faith in Jesus, you are headed to heaven. You are headed for God's presence. You have eternal life living in you right now. And you have light where there was darkness in your heart right now, in your mind right now. Praise God. Praise God for that. There's one other thing. Oh, let me just mention this. If you just put your faith in Jesus, we've got a course, uh, just a simple online course, Following Jesus, that we would love to get you, uh, get you going on. It's just for you and Jesus. Bring you closer to Jesus. And we'll give you a little bit more information about that at the end of the service today. If you need a miracle, I'm going to go back over the three things I talked about that Jesus, mighty God, does. And I'm going to invite you to the front for prayer here in just a minute. If you need a miracle, you need the laws of nature overturned in your life. If you need healing for your body or soul, if you want to be delivered and set free from the devil's torment or from affliction, I want to invite you to the front for prayer. We could take just a few minutes here at the front, but if you need healing, a miracle, or deliverance, come right now. And I, I think that's probably many people need healing. So come, come, come. Let's, let's just pray. By, by stepping out, you're actually taking a step of faith. And there is something powerful in that. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. And I'm just going to come through uh, and anoint each person with oil. Oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. And, I'm, uh, and then I'm going to come up and, and, just, and pray for all of you together. Uh, if you're in the room, uh, let, let's, let's put our faith. I'm going to anoint you in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's put our faith together right now for all these people that have come. So, Lord, right now, we just bring every person to you. And, Lord, we are, we are bringing uh, our, our needs and what's going on in our lives, our bodies, our situations to you right now because you are the mighty God. And we come, Lord, in faith believing. We don't come as, a, as some kind of a routine exercise. Lord, we come right now into the very presence of the mighty God, the one who has promised, the great light. 
And Lord, we just thank you, Jesus, that you are here in this room. You said, Jesus, that if two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Jesus, the light of the world is right here in this room. Jesus, the mighty God, is right here, right now. You are present to heal, Lord. You are present to deliver. You are present, Lord God, to overturn the laws of nature in our lives. Lord, I know what the bank says, but you are greater than the bank. Lord, I know what the doctor says, but you are greater than the doctor. I praise you, Lord God. I know what, what the nature of things, I know what is said to be impossible, but you are greater than what is said to be impossible. For with God, all things are possible. And I thank you, Lord. So right now, Lord, you know each situation. I know some of them. I don't know all of them. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, Lord God. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you, mighty God, would come and change things right now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord God, I pray, Lord, some of us are praying for healing. Lord, I pray for healing in our bodies. Lord, uh, we're praying for people that we care about, for healing for them as well. Lord, we're praying for healing. Lord, I pray right now that cancer would fall off bodies right now in Jesus' name. I, I pray, Lord, that brains would begin to work correctly. I pray that bleeding would stop. The, the wrong kind of bleeding would stop right now in Jesus' name. I pray for healing, for deliverance, Lord God. Lord, I pray, Lord God, that brains would function correctly, Lord God. I pray that seizures would end today. In Jesus' name. And I thank you for it, Lord God. I thank you that the leukemia is, is disappearing in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that death sentences are taken off of lives right now in Jesus' name because of the mighty God, because the mighty God is here. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, I praise you, Lord. Lord, necesitamos sanación en este momento. Necesito prosperidad aquí ahora. Ne necesito bendiciones para nuestras familias ahora. Por favor, pa por favor, Señor, ahora. Tu fuego, ahora. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in these moments. We thank you, Lord God, that you are saving, healing, delivering. Lord, I want to pray right now in Jesus' name specifically for those who are experiencing torment. Torment of, of the enemy, anxiety, depression, Lord, whatever, whatever form that, that it takes right now, in Jesus' name, we break it off. And we just set aside these people for the kingdom of God. And Lord, we just pray in Jesus' name, your kingdom would come into them right now, Lord God. That darkness would flee, that your light would replace darkness. Lord, I pray for the end of torment right now. We break it off in Jesus' name. We bind every work of the enemy against us right now in Jesus' name. We bind it. We bind the enemy. And we lose your freedom. We lose your, uh, your, um, your protection. We lose your liberty right now. We lose your joy into our lives right now, Lord God. Lord, I thank you that you are a savior. You are a healer. You are a deliverer. I thank you, Lord, and we praise you that you are the mighty God. So now if you're up front, and even if you're uh, uh, wherever in the room or online, but especially if you're up front, would you begin to, to, to praise in a prophetic tense? Thank you, Lord, that I am healed. Even if you haven't seen it with your eyes yet, thank you, Lord, my family is set free. Thank you, Lord, I am free from addiction. Thank you, Lord, I'm free from anxiety. Thank you, Lord, I have your peace. Thank you, Lord, my life is new. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in my family. Thank you that it is done. It is finished right now in Jesus' name. We declare it, and we thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for that healing. Thank you for that freedom. Thank you for that deliverance. Thank you for that miracle. Thank you for that direction. Thank you for that wisdom, Lord God. Thank you for, for healing our families, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, mighty God. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. And Lord, we have, we have prayed, we have praised all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the mighty God. Amen. 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 Can we just give our praise? Thank you, Lord. We receive it. We receive it. Amen. Amen. You can go ahead back to your seats. Give us some final words there, Pastor Christian, if you would. Oh, man. So good. Our God is greater than the impossible. Amen. 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 He's a mighty God. Well, the, at this time, the ushers are going to be coming down the aisles. They're going to be collecting those Connect cards. So if you fill those out, please just pass them on to the ushers as they come down. If you didn't fill it out, you got like 0.5 seconds to do that. So get right in. And um, just so you know, remember next week the kids are going to be here for um, 
uh, singing their song in front, so make sure you bring your kids next week. Make sure that you're here to support them. It's going to be such a great time of connecting and being with each other. Other than that, I've forgotten everything else. Oh yeah, the following Jesus course. If you, if you um, did accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, if today was your day or today was the day you made a commitment, please see me at the following Jesus booth all the way in the, in the lobby. It's that big black banner. We've got a swag bag for you. It's got a book. Um, it's got a devotional. All the, and it's got a free online course in there for you to just, it's some next steps on how to follow Jesus, how to make him Lord of your life. How, how do you be a Christian? I don't know. Like, we, we need to know. We need to be taught. And so please speak to me. I'd love to have a conversation with you, or I'll just give you the bag if you want to leave. It's fine. All right. <laughs> All right. We love you guys. We will see you. God bless.